Ellington Reed, Richard Tremzinski, Thomas Davis. Mr. President and Board, um, <clears throat> Kevin Smith on behalf of the Building Commissioner, Mr. Portalatin, who is present here tonight. Uh, we have obviously several properties before you. These are all uh, up for initial demolition hearing under the Unsafe Building Act. I can report to the Board that, uh, for the, and for the record, that uh, notice has been given both by regular and certified mail. There's been posting on the property and publication in the Northwest Indiana Times, all pursuant to the Unsafe Building Act. I presented to the board a binder which has the photographs of each property listed 1 through 17. 1 through 17. Um, so what I'd like to do if we could, because we do have a couple of attorneys present, is go out of order so they can have their business uh, done and be on their way this evening. Um, I believe Mr. Bauer is here for number three, and that's 3829 Alder Street. Um, Mr. Bauer, you're, you're welcome to come up if you'd like. Uh, the owner is listed as BTB Investment 2 LLC from East Chicago. Mr. Bauer represents the lender. Um, the owner did appear earlier and indicated to Mr. Portalatin that um, he would like to enter into a rehab agreement. This is a property that's a two-story brick structure boarded up on the south side, front side, and the rear. The rear structure appears to be sited and in disrepair. The rear door is boarded up and the rear steps are failing. That's all pursuant to the photographs that we've presented and the uh, notice listing the, um, the issues under the Unsafe Building Act per the inspection of the property. Um, the city would request that the order of demolition be entered but stayed pending um, the owner working with Mr. Portalatine on a rehab agreement. So, uh, Mr. Bauer, you're welcome to present whatever you'd like to present to the board. Good evening. Uh, thank you, Mr. Smith. Um, and thanks for explaining that before the, the hearing. Um, we missed the borrower here tonight, but from my perspective, it's a borrower, but it's the owner. Um, yeah, we wanted to have enough time to take action with our borrower to force them to bring the building into compliance, but I understand it's going to enter into a rehab agreement. This process has been explained. Um, from a lender's perspective, we just wanted time to force action on this, and um, we appreciate any consideration from the city. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. We can live with that. I don't know how long it stayed and everything. We're going to bring our, you know, um, our leverage to bear on this situation to try and encourage uh, quick action. It's, uh, it's tough for this lender to react, so um, uh, we can live with that. I just don't know how the stay operates in terms of length, like when the stay is up. And um, but um, so I can report back to my lender. I have to report to people in New York on this, and all I want to do is tell them, hey. You have to get your borrower to act and um, get this rehab agreement done and the stay will continue. But I don't know when you're going to be back here or when the stay expires. The 90 days, so that uh, our 
stay. So the stay will stay in place that period of time at least. Okay, and then new notice will go out to trigger the lender in New York to follow up. So oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, sounds like a reasonable plan to force action that the city wants on this. Thank you so much. All right, so the city's request is to enter the order on, on that, and you know, as we've done in the past, if you'd like to, uh, since Mr. Bauer is here, President, if you could take this one and just. Um, entertain the city's request then to enter the order, but then for ones that people didn't show up, we'll have those all at once. So this is just one we'd I'd like you to, if you could, uh, enter the order on this property as requested by the city. How long is the stay? So the stay will be um, depend dependent upon when the rehab agreement is placed before you. So we don't know the answer to that yet, but it'll be 90 days after the rehab agreement is approved which were probably two to three weeks out. And so that'll also, that'll be before you. So at this time, if you could uh, entertain a motion to enter the order of demolition, but to stay it pending the rehab agreement. <laughs> yes. Enter the order. So we just need a motion then, please. I second the motion. Mr. Davies. I will yes to. All right. Thank you, board. Um, the next uh, matter of business is uh, Mr. Adam Decker is here for two properties, 30, which is number 13, 3702 Guthrie Street, and number 16, 4001 McCook Avenue. And because the issues are the same in the sense that Mr. Decker represents the tax sale purchaser, Mr. Ayala, um, we'd ask that these be taken together. Um, so 3702 Guthrie just to set the record, you have the pictures in front of you. That's number 13. Um, it does have exemptions on it as well, so I assume that that will be taken care of once Mr. Decker's uh, client gets tax deed. Um, it's currently owned by Mr. Roosevelt Chapman, who actually appeared today. Um, the front side of the property, stairs, windows, door, awning, uh, all has paint chipping and peeling. Um, the north side of the property shows gutter corrosion, leaking and disrepair. The roof is deteriorating with visible holes. The north side of the property shows loose siding and the chimney needing tuck pointing. The rear of the structure shows the stairs to be in extreme disrepair and dangerous. Doors and windows are in disrepair. So based on the condition of the property, uh, we would request, well, I should also set the record for 4001 McCook. Um, Mr. Decker is here also on behalf of Mr. Ayala for that, who is the um, tax sale purchaser. The owner, however, is currently listed as Willa May Torrance. Um, this property uh, has over, overgrowth on it. It appears to have a deteriorated staircase in the back and leaning to one side uh, with windows, doors, and other parts of the property in disrepair. So given the condition of the properties as presented both by me and in the book, uh, we would request the orders be entered. Um, I know that Mr. Decker is in a conversation with Mr. Portlatin regarding the fact that his client will not um, have ownership of the property until sometime in January and probably not have the tax deed till April. Uh, however, um, that's probably a conversation that Mr. Decker's client and Mr. Portolatine have to have regarding whether he'll entertain a rehab. So at this time, we would request that the orders on both those properties be entered as presented. And I'll ask Mr. Decker if he's got anything he'd like to present. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Good evening, Mr. President. Number, my name is Adam, Adam Decker. Um, I represent uh, Mr. Jose Ayala, who purchased the tax sale certificate for these parcels uh, that were identified by Mr. Smith. Um, as you may be familiar, when taxes go delinquent, the county auditor and treasurer then uh, put them on the uh, tax sale rolls, and they're subject to uh, auction. And as my client, as the uh, certificate holder, intends to proceed with uh, a petition to the court uh, seeking the issuance of a tax deed. Uh, Mr. Smith is correct that the tax deed itself is unlikely to be issued by the auditor until sometime next year in 2023, just based on the statutory uh, deadlines and uh, timeframes within which that occurs. I would formally request a continuance of the 
uh, Board of S Public Safety's determination, to, uh, in which I understand it's going to consider tonight, uh, that the demolition order be entered. Uh, and I make that request simply because, as I've indicated, my client doesn't yet own the property, and he cannot take any affirmative action at this point to go in and address any of the uh, specific items that are presented to you uh, concerning uh, the, the properties. And I've spoken to um, Mr. Smith and Mr. Portland, and my client has indicated to me that he intends to eventually rehabilitate the properties, but cannot start doing that until the tax deed has been issued. So uh, I would I would respectfully request the board consider um, a continuance. Um, I don't know how far that would be considered. If, it, if it's perhaps you know 60 days, I'm willing to come back and at least report you know what the status is regarding the legal proceedings. Um, if that's something that the board would consider doing. I thank you for your time. No, no, I, I, I'm actually not um, proposing that the demolition order be entered but stayed. I'm asking that the board not enter the order for demolition uh, for a period of time that the board considers reasonable until the tax sale proceedings have uh, basically wound their way through the court. The reason I ask for that is if the, court, if the Board of Safety enters a demolition order, then by the statute under Indiana Code, my client or any other party has a deadline of 10 days to file an action for judicial review of that demolition order. The state statute is very specific and in, in very um, exacting in terms of that 10-day time frame. And so I'm, I'm seeking to avoid having to go through that process if the Board enters the order for demolition. Yes, Mr. Smith, please. Mr. Smith, are you willing to? Set this for a status for 60 days. So, uh, we wouldn't enter the demo order yet tonight. And then, uh, Mr. Um, Ayala, we asked Mr. Decker to make sure Mr. Ayala meets with Mr. Perlick during that time and get a feel for what he wants to do with each of the properties. And then, um, Mr. Decker or Mr. Ayala can appear in 60 days. Um, so, I guess, although we just need probably the last meeting of the year, we're going to be here in late December. I'm sure we're all very excited for that. Okay, so maybe we'll set it for the January meeting. Right? January meeting. This is already October. Because December, we probably won't have that last meeting. Usually, that meeting has been. So we're already in the January meeting. December 12th. Okay, so that'll give enough time for um, Mr. Ayala to meet. So if we could show this on the agenda, we'll go for December 12th. Set it for status for December 12th, and, and then we'll uh, request Mr. Ayala to appear with Mr. Portlatine at that time. And either he or Mr. Decker would be um, ordered to appear on the December 12th date to report back. And Mr. Portlatine then at that point will have a report as well. We can see if we're going to go forward with the demolition, uh, we, which, you know, or I'm sorry, if we're going to go forward with the regular procedure would be to enter the demolition and, and stay at entering a rehab. So, all right. So we'll show both of those sets for a month and we can request the status for you. That's fine. December 12th, see you then. December 12th, I will have my client contact uh, staff and hopefully uh, we'll move things forward. All right. Thank, Thank you. Have a good evening. Okay. Um, that takes care of the two matters in which the attorneys were present. Now we can go back. Uh, it's number one.
1120 138th Street. Uh, Mr. Jamar Anderson appeared in person today and spoke with Mr. Porto uh, Also, Mr. Flores' his attorney uh, called. This is number one on the tab. Uh, as you can see, it's a two story structure with siding falling off on multiple sides, overgrown bushes in the front and rear, boarded up windows in the front, and unsafe staircase. Um, on this property, we're going, and again, we'll just do all of them at once and after we do. On this property, we were gonna, we will request uh, the order to demolition be entered and stayed pending a rehab. Uh, the next one is 505 140th Street. Uh, this is a property listed at, owned by the estate of Raymond and Estella Galvin. Uh, the property appears in significant disrepair. This is number two in the, in the, in the book, including a bowed roof, overgrowth, bricks in the front staircase falling over. The gutters appear to be failing. Windows are, window, windows are unsecure, and the rear of the structure has a lot of junk, cars, and material. Uh, no one appeared. We request the order be entered. The next property is 3918 Alexander. This is another property that has exemptions, so we request that those be uh, signed off on and removed. Uh, we had a new owner, Mr. Antonio De Los Santos, appeared. Uh, this is number four in the book. Um, he's from the southeast side of Chicago, and this is a property in which the, the roof is deteriorating, paint is chipping and peeling, missing fascia, soffit, boards on the first floor. Windows need boarding but are not boarded. The rear of the structure has a hole in the attic with no window. The rear stairs have failed, and the electric appears to be pulled with no meters. We request that this order be entered and stayed pending a rehab agreement. 4858 Alexander. Um, this is a property that originally had a uh, demolition in 2020, but it has since expired, and since that, owner, since that time, ownership has changed to a Courtney Harris in Crown Point. Uh, it appears that it is missing uh, and rotting, has missing and rotting fascia, some boarded up windows. The siding is failing on the front of the structure. The west side of the structure is missing siding with broken gutters. The east side of the structure is missing windows and the gutters hanging off. It appears to be a boarding house type structure. There's broken glass on the front of the structure and rear of the structure has holes that need to be closed along with broken gutters and missing windows. The owner fails to appear. We would request that the order be entered. Uh, 4608 Berrien Avenue. The owners are listed as Sandra and Cruz Hermosillo. Uh, Mr. Arturo, Arturo Nunez showed up. He's the next door neighbor and just has an interest in the property. I mean, sorry, interest in purchasing the property, I should say, from Mr. and Mrs. Hermosillo. Uh, uh, this pro property also was previously subject to a demolition order in 2017. This is uh, number six in your book. The photos show a boarded up vacant house with missing siding, fascia, and soffit. These are placed as an effective covering on the front of the building. The brick chimney is continuing to fail. Um, at the last demolition hearing back in 2017, so that was five years ago, Mr. Cruz Hermosillo appeared and said that he bought it on land contract and wanted to fix it up. Nothing has occurred since that time. Uh, we would request that the order be entered um, as presented as there is a failure to appear. Next matter is 4821 Bering Avenue. This also has exemptions on it that need to be removed. It's owned by Prairie View Holdings LLC from Olcott Avenue in East Chicago. This is number seven in your book. Oh, I'm sorry, who was the owner that appeared today? Okay, so this would be, uh, this was originally, uh, Mr. Markovich was involved in that contact. All right, so this was back from 2018, had the same owner. Um, we didn't, the demolition didn't occur. The property appears to be deteriorated in significant disrepair. Um, we would request, based on the condition of the property, that the order be entered but stayed subject to a rehab. Okay, next is 1125 Beacon Street. The owner, for Mr. Ferdinand Malav, um, I think I'm saying that right, Malav, Malave, he was here, uh, met with um, uh, Mr. Porta Latin. It's a two-story brick structure. This is number eight in your book with a damaged canopy. The front lower soffit and fascia need repair. Windows need repair and the landscaping is overgrown. It appears the north corner of the rear property needs soffit and fascia as of the north and south near the front entrance. The garage soffit and fascia need repair as well, as does the roof. Uh, we would request that the order be entered, but stay pending a rehab. Uh, 3744 carry, number nine in your book. 
a Mr. Miss Ellen Johnson, who has passed away from Valparaiso. Uh, Mr. Howard Johnson appeared, who was her guardian and is her son, and is going to try and open an estate. Uh, we do have Mr. Johnson's information. Uh, it's a has extreme overgrowth of bushes and weeds in the front. The front window appears to be boarded up. The rear of the structure, especially the garage, shows a failing lintel uh, and bricks. Siding appears to be falling on the structure, and bricks on the rear side of the garage appear to be failing. We request the order be entered pending in a state pending a review. 3910 Deal Street. Uh, the owner is listed as Milton Copeland at that address. Two and a half story brick structure with boarded up windows on the rear. There's a hole in the roof on the south side of the building. The eaves, soffit, and fascia are all wood and failing and need repair. Paint is chipping and peeling. The south side, second floor windows are failing, and the front northwest column appears to be structurally unsound. Uh, we would request that the order be entered on this property. This is number 10 in your, in your book, and that the property ended up be stayed pending the rehab. 4004 Euclid, owned by Mr. Hugo Barrera. He appeared today. Uh, he has indicated that he does not have the ability to rehab the property and uh, acknowledge the condition of the property. This was subject to a previous demolition order in 2018, owned by a different person. Uh, it's continued to deteriorate since that time. Siding is coming off the structure and deteriorated south wall appears to be concrete. The rear structure shows crumbling concrete as well. We request that the order be entered. 4001 First Street, uh, Mr. Martinez from Wooddale, Illinois, appeared today. Um, it is a two-story brick structure. This is number 12 in your book. Uh, with a chip paint on the garage and overgrowth in the front structure, uh, we would request that the order be entered and stayed subject to a rehab. Number 14 in your book, which is 4214 Ivy Street. This also is a property with exemptions. It is shown, shown owned, owned by Olga and Sebastian Escobedo. Uh, at that address, two-story structure showing extreme disrepair to the garage. Stairs are in dangerous condition, and the rear of the structure shows deterioration of the rear staircase. The roof is in disrepair as well. The owner fails to appear, and we would request that the order be entered. <coughs> Number 15 in your book, 4936 Kennedy Avenue. Um, it's owned by Mr. Romero Servant of Hammond. He and his wife appeared today. Uh, this property has actually been repaired substantially, and permits have been pulled. Mr. Portolatin has requested that no demolition order be entered at this time, but that a status be set for the January meeting, which would be January, set for January 23rd of 23 for a status, please. And finally, number 17 in your book, 4814 Olcott, Olcott Avenue, the owner is listed as a Luis Guerra, Guerra of Griffith. Um, the rear side of the building has decaying bricks. The garage door needs replacing, and the front garage door is not operative. Mr. Uh, no one appeared on, on behalf of this property, and therefore we request the order be entered. Uh, Mr. President and, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Portolati. Okay, so uh, Mr. Portolati received a phone call, but no one appeared today. We request the order be entered, but stayed pending a rehab. Thank you, Mr. Portlatti. That concludes my request to the board. I would request that all orders uh, and orders be entered, all stays be entered as requested, and that all dates be uh, set for status as requested. on the agenda is the notice of emergency order to demolish. This was a uh, garage that was severely dilapidated at 4214 Ivy. Um, it's one of the properties that was presented to you uh, today as far as the, 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 sh the front house. But however, we could not wait on the garage. The garage was in severely uh, uh, dilapidated uh, condition and uh, open. We didn't want anyone to you know, walk in there. So we had to demolish the, the garage.
motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Motion adjourned.